we got one more in the waiting room. Okay. Good morning, Jalen. Jalen, were you able to pick up the toolkit from Hazen? No. Okay, so I am recording this, so you'll be able to kind of follow along once you get your toolkit. So you'll just watch for today. Alrighty. Okay, let's get this started. Everybody with your toolkits, I'm going to switch over to the webcam. And you should be seeing my toolkit, is that correct? So during this exercise, this is where we're gonna actually start talking and I need feedback because I need to be able to hear you and get a response from where you're at since I can't really see you work with your toolkits. So first thing in everybody's toolkit, please find the safety glasses. Open them up. I need you to put them on and turn on your camera to verify that you are wearing your safety glasses. So safety glasses on and then turn your camera on for a second to show me that you have your safety glasses on. Thank you, Rodrigo. I see you, Rodrigo. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Mr. Trapp? Yes. My glasses are too big for the safety glasses. I can't put them on, on under it. Under, and they won't go over? And you, yeah. you are wearing glasses right now? Yeah. OK, you'll, you'll be fine. This is like, I would classify this as like super low risk eye injury since it's nothing powered. So um, your prescription glasses will be fine for this. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? I think we got everybody. Okay, the next item in your kit will be the gloves. Please put the gloves on. The metal cutouts are sharp. I did cut myself when I was packaging up all your kits. It's not if you get cut, it will be win. So please wear your gloves. They might be a little big, but that's better than no gloves at all. In your kit, you will also find two band-aids just in case. I want you to be prepared. Safety first. Okay. First thing we need to do is assemble some of the items that should be in a clear Ziploc bag. It's kind of a tool that will be used for bending the tabs on all the projects. So that's gonna be the first thing. So find this Ziploc bag. It should have two rivets, two screws, and three cutout pieces of metal. I'm gonna set my kit off to the side and take out the three pieces of aluminum. These three pieces were cut out on my CNC plasma cutter and they require a lot more deburring or cleaning to um, get them ready to assemble. The other parts in the kit were cut on a laser from a company in Nevada and you'll see later that they require a lot less deburring. So everybody have these three parts? I did my absolute best to make sure all the kits were the same and had the inventory. I have them, yeah. Okay, cool. If you don't, I guess speak up and we'll figure it out, but I'm pretty sure everybody's got it. I'm very careful with assembling the kit. Okay, in your kit, the first tool that we'll be doing, working with, is the file. It's a half round flat file. So please verify that you have a file. On these parts, the kind of, I don't know, you call it maybe like 
it's called slag but the dross or the stuff on the back is kind of like a rough edge that's from the bottom side when the plasma cutter cuts through the metal it kind of creates a burr on the back and that needs to be filed down we'll also use sandpaper you should also see a little tab of metal that was left so when these were cut they were still connected to the sheet of metal and then i could snap it off and break the tab away so i didn't have to like reach down into the bottom of my machine to grab these parts so we need to file off the tabs and kind of deburr the edges from the slag so first you're going to take your file and i'm also working on a sheet of cardboard you should be doing that also to protect your work surface and basically with the file you want to push smooth away that tab from the plasma cutting process once that tab has been removed you can work your way around the rest of the part just lightly breaking the edge deburring it Working your way around. You can also use one of these small pieces of sandpaper in your kit to deburr the edges of this part. Since this part's gonna be kind of used as a tool, it'd be nice to have it completely burr free so there's no rough edges. Even though we are wearing gloves, you know, there's no low chance of getting cut, but if you took your gloves off and use this tool for handling it, the burr free edge would prevent you from getting cut. So repeat the process for the other two parts. Or to use the file first and then go back with the sandpaper. We're going to be using a different tool to deeper the hole. Right now we're just using the sandpaper and the file to deeper the edges. Everybody doing good? I'll assume no feedback is outstanding and excellent. And we need the edge to be completely deburred so these three pieces will get stacked on top of each other and we don't have a gap in between if we put them together without deburring there would be a little bit of a gap it would still probably work but um, we're going to achieve a little bit higher quality with that there's also a larger sheet of sandpaper in your kit and you can use it kind of like this on the table. Sometimes it's hard to get it started. Go back and forth this way. And that will kind of clean up the surface. Now 
another technique, you can also just run the edge along the flat sandpaper like this. You indicate that you are done deburring the three parts. You can either turn your camera on or use one of the reactions, preferably the green check mark. Green check mark reaction in Zoom to indicate that you have deburred the outside edges of your part. You got Malman. I think another minute would probably still be acceptable. These don't have to be absolutely perfect, but if another minute of deburring will definitely get the job done. Since these are aluminum and you've already deburred, if you do want to take a glove off and kind of feel the edge gently, that will give you a good idea whether this is nice and soft and completely deburred. If we were in a shop, there would be other larger pieces of equipment that could deburr this a lot faster, but we're kind of going old school with a file and sandpaper. Nothing wrong with that. So all my edges are nice and smooth. Is anyone still deburring the outside edge? I am. Okay, let's try to go. About one more minute. The next tool in your toolkit that you need to find is the countersink tool for deburring the holes. Everybody find their countersink tool? So with this tool, you just basically take the cutting edge put it in the hole and twist it clockwise to the right a few times. That's going to deburr the hole. Do that on both sides, just a few twists. You don't wanna to go too far and actually like countersink it, we're just deburring. So just a quick little twist in the hole will deburr that plasma cut edge. Everybody having fun? Take that as a yes. Mr. Allen, they're very quiet. More of that. Okay. We save on the bandwidth, I guess. You know, they could say, doing good, doing good, thank you. Mm -hmm. They just quiet. They're quiet. It's, a, it's early too. Doing good, doing good, thank you. Yes, oh, yes, thank you. Let us know. <laughs> okay, everybody have their holes deburred? Anybody want to take a guess? Why? Okay, well, we'll just do a little 
discussion. So with these holes, anybody want to take a guess why there's like a little notch in the hole? Any guesses to so what we can slot things into it? So, so you can slot things into it, like if it was another part that would come in this way. That could possibly work, but that is not the purpose or function of that. Any other guesses? It has to do with time. Time to get these parts cut out. So by adding the little slot, it basically turns this part into a one single continuous cut path with the CNC plasma cutter. If I didn't have that slot, it would have to start and stop, cut the hole, move over, start and stop, cut the hole, and then start and stop again on the outside. So that makes it a three operation part. So by adding the slide, it just goes around all in one path, cutting the holes and the outside in one operation. So that saves a few seconds on each part that I had to do. And since there really isn't anything super structural or technical with this part, it is kind of a, a hack or a compromise so we can do to save time on cutting out these parts. Okay. In your kit, the next items you need to find are the Quico pliers, and you should have two kind of free range golden colored Clicos, not the ones that are in the plastic bag that are copper. You should just have two of these gold colored Clicos. But those are silver. Uh, gold and silver. Some of you actually might have a different color. They're they're not these ones. You should have two other ones. They're definitely gold in real life. Maybe the camera is not picking it up that well. Okay, so Clicos are used for fastening metal parts together that have holes. Very popular in aerospace. Pretty handy tool once you realize what they can do and I definitely worked many, many years in a shop without Clicos. And once I saw them, I'm like, oh, those are really cool. So these three parts have a stack up and layout that is somewhat critical. There's a notch on each part. That notch is purely just for laying it out correctly. It's kind of a um, mistake proofing concept. Used in manufacturing, the Japanese term would be pokeyoke. So basically, all these notches need to line up. So this would be incorrect because the notches are not facing each other. So you're gonna take a big part, sandwich a smaller part in the middle and put a big part on top. And then you'll take a Clico goes like that. You squeeze it and you can kind of see how the Clico works. It extends, oh, there we go. It extends this little pin out and that pin expands as you release it. So that will get inserted into the hole, release, and then that is securely held together. Insert the other Clico. Confirm that all three notches are on the same side and that you have the smaller one sandwiched in the middle. With all these projects that we're doing, there is relatively zero room for mistakes because you don't have extra parts and you won't have a way to remove a rivet unless you have access to a drill and a drill bit. So can I get everybody to turn their camera on and verify with me by holding their part in front of your camera that you have completed this 
assembly with Clicos. Give you a minute to get caught up. Once again, once you get to this step, please turn on your camera, show me. I need some evidence you're following along. You got the small one sandwiched in the middle. Cool. Once again, once you have this step completed, please turn on your camera and show me. Chris, how you doing? Melvin, Ian, Rodrigo, Philip. I'm doing all right. I just uh, just started. Okay. Might be good if you can actually keep your cameras on so I can and just put your hands in front of the camera a little bit so I can see where you're at, see who's working. I think we have enough bandwidth to get everybody's camera on. It would bring me incredible joy to actually see your hands working on these projects. Yeah, it looks perfect, Abdullahi. Yeah, let's get our cameras on so I can actually see where everybody's at. That's one thing. Normally in the shop, I'll be walking around looking, checking progress, but here I don't know what I'm waiting for. I can see if somebody's struggling. I think if they're using the Clico pliers backwards or something like that. Make sure you're still wearing your gloves and your safety glasses. Looks good, Rodrigo. Got yours, Ian. Okay. Melvin, how about you? I'm having difficulties putting in the putting it in the hole. Okay. So this is where let's turn our camera on and look and see if there's any way I can help troubleshoot that visually. Um, there is a very slight 
possibility that the holes could be too small for the Clico. Um, I believe they are slightly oversized. And what Clicos are you using, Melvin? These ones. And those are the one that looks more gold than instead of copper? Yeah, these are uh, the only ones that were outside by themselves. Okay. And then you're putting the Clico in the Clico wrench and squeezing it? Yeah. Because if you're not squeezing it, it's not going to fit in the hole. Okay. Put in a Clico plier, squeeze it, and then it should go into the hole and release. Okay. Philip, are you working in the dark? That'd be unsafe. Very dark with your camera. Malvin, is it working? The thing fell apart before I squeezed the thing, so I'm just putting it back together. Okay, it's, it's, sometimes these tools are a little awkward using for the first time. We're all good. Anybody have any questions? So the next step will be installing the rivets. You will need this tool. That is the kind of the most important tool out of the whole kit. Without that, we couldn't install the rivets. How you doing, Malvin? You getting it? It just keeps shifting. I can't like put it in. Eh. Okay, you might be able to just um, substitute the Clicos or skip the Clicos and just use the rivets. So that will work. I mean, for what this tool is, it just needs to be riveted together. So I think, um, I think you can possibly just try it with the rivets if you just can kind of squeeze it together with your hand. I think it will still work. Okay. Or, or just wait and I'll circle back towards the end and I'll get you caught up. Okay. So with the pop rivet squeeze, how many have used something like this before? So it's used for installing pop rivets. This can be done manually or done with a kind of compressed air one. Since we don't have compressed air, that's why we're using these. These are about like maybe 15 to $25, depending on the brand. Has a little release on the back so you'll flip that little wire piece out and that allows you to squeeze it. The tip of it has a little nose piece that has a little hole and there's four different sizes of nose pieces and they can be swapped out. So in your plastic bag you should have two rivets. These rivets are larger than the other rivets that we'll be using for the rest of the projects. So what you need to do with this pop rivet, the long skinny end, this part on the left where I'm holding it, needs to fit into the nose piece. Most likely the nose piece that's already installed in your pop rivet squeeze is too small. So that doesn't fit. So we're gonna have to take this one out and swap it with a different one. There should be one that's even smaller, but definitely doesn't fit. One that fits nice and smooth and then one that's actually a little bit too big. So you wanna find the nose piece that 
fits in with fairly just a little bit of wiggle room. Definitely not the one that's too big. They're not marked, they're not labeled, and that's a 732nd diameter. In the handle of your pop rivet squeeze, there's a little wrench. You need to take out that wrench. And take out the nose piece for the eighth inch rivet. This is the one that we'll probably use a lot. So you unscrew it. I'm going to set it down and then unscrew the one that fits the bigger rivet. and put that in the head of the rivet squeeze. So you have to squeeze it together because it's got some little, if you actually want to see how these kind of work, there's like a little beak inside here that will pull the rivet and expand it and make it kind of pop. So I have to squeeze it and then I'm going to hand tighten the larger nose piece and then take the wrench and just give it a slight tighten not super tight at all just just snug and then take the extra one the original one and put it back into the pop rivet squeeze so we don't lose it okay so what we just did is basically swap out the nose piece to accept the 732nd diameter rivet. and take the wrench put it back into the handle and what we're going to do now take out one of the clicos because they're only a temporary way to hold things together. And we're going to take one of the large pop rivets, and it should fit in the hole where the click goes at. Make sure everything's still lined up nice and smooth. Take the pop rivet squeeze, slide it over the stem of the rivet. And as you squeeze this, it's going to pull the ball end of that rivet through the actual rivet and cause it to expand, locking in place. So you're going to have to squeeze with some strength. Going to squeeze right now one time. Two times. And then looks like on mine, the third time, the stem of the rivet snapped off. Gonna put the Clico back in the toolkit, remove the second Clico. Find the other rivet. Install. 
I'm actually putting the bottom handle of the rivet squeeze on the table and kind of pushing down so I can hold the part with my left hand and squeeze with the right and utilizing the table. The little stem pieces that snap off, I'm just gonna put them back in my Ziploc bag. Those will eventually just get thrown away. And you should have this riveted together and this will be a tool that will be used for bending. Once it's assembled, you can also take the little piece of sandpaper if you choose and kind of sand it, deeper it while it's riveted together. Making everything nice and flush and smooth. I'm just kind of occupying myself right now. Making sure it's nice and smooth. You can go ahead and swap out the nose piece. You should have a box of eighth inch rivets. These rivets are much smaller and these are the rivets that we're gonna use for our projects. So go ahead and swap out the nose piece back to the eighth inch diameter one, it should be the second smallest one, the one that was most likely already installed from the manufacturer. So. Take out the large one. Swap it with the one that fits the rivets in the box.
Anybody have any questions, comments? So tomorrow we'll assemble one of the projects. Please do not go rogue and start putting all the projects together. You probably could figure it out, but you might not do it the best way possible and we need to do it together. And like I said, there's very little or no room for a mistake. So we need to do all the projects together as a class. I am, give me a second to make a new module in Canvas. Okay, the part that we just made is called the folding tool. In Canvas, there's a module called Kit Projects. That's what we're working on right now. And there's an assignment called Folding Tool. You're going to upload a photo of the part that you just made to Canvas so I can get that assigned in the gradebook. So that is kind of your exit ticket. You're then going to take all of your kit items put them back in the box. And you might have a little bit of metal shavings on your cardboard. Go ahead and place those in the trash or sweep or vacuum them up. Once again, please upload a photo of your folding tool to Canvas for grade in the gradebook. Okay, I'm going to stop recording.